Matt Zimmerman is a vibe in and to himself. He is, of course, former assistant coach at Arkansas, many other places, basketball analyst on the Razorback Sports Network, and uh, co-host of the Razorback Daily, along with Quinn Grovey. We got him right now. Zim, good morning. How are you? Oh, doing good. It's a beautiful day in Fayetteville. The weather's gorgeous. Veterans Day. So I've been thinking about a lot of the veterans. It's a... Uh, it's nice, and uh, getting it's Texas week. This is Matt Jones week right here. It's Matt Jones week. Did you know that, Matt? It's a celebration of you, too. I did not know that, but it is Texas week, and uh, what what better way to go out there and, and uh, man, if they could play hard, play well, play fast, get some turnovers, not turn the ball over. Since you brought that up, I know I want to talk a little basketball with you, but what do you think the yeah. key is for, for the football hogs to get past Texas this week? I think we just got to have a, a great start, have a good start, kind of like we did with, you know, the, the Tennessee game was that grind, that slow game early, not a lot of points. That that worked out well. Our defense was so good. And, that, and I think that's going to be the same recipe here, a low scoring games and, and hang in there early or score early, get a lead early, put pressure on Texas. Texas is thinking about college football playoffs. They're still in the race to win the SEC championship. So they're playing for a lot, and we are too, but we're, we're playing for different things. So hopefully, Matt, you know, if we can put the pressure on them. We're at home. There's going to be a tremendous crowd, hopefully ever six full, and that it's a, a wild atmosphere like it was against Tennessee and LSU. This time it's going to be 11 o'clock in the morning, get up early, get here. So our defense is going to have to be great, and we, we know that. And uh, the defense is going to have to be really, really good. So it, it, it's anxious to see. I'm anxious to see who's back, you know, is – Taylor's going to be able to play and be effective. And and the Jack, is he going to be able to play? And maybe if Zim's cell phone continues to work at some point, because we could kind of tell there for a moment it was going to go bye-bye. We lost uh, lost Matt Zimmerman there. A little bit of of herky-jerkiness on the cell phone communication today. We'll get him back. Um, Yeah, I mean, that's the first thing you got to wonder about, the availability of Taylor Green for this game. And I think think Arkansas needs to have a full complement of running backs that feel a heck of a lot better about their opportunity to to, to compete in this game and and pull an upset if uh, whatever ails Braylon Russell isn't bothering him as much now and with Jaquindon Jackson ready to go because – this is this is his former this is his former program too. I'd imagine he's got a little bit of a of a thirst to play against the Longhorns as well. Not like revenge or anything like that. It's just he he wore that uniform for a year. All right, we got we got Zim back. Zim, you back? Everything okay? Oh yeah, good. I'm up here on the. We had a meeting in the uh, conference room up here at Boyle, so I'm out here on the big red rooftop bar. So. I don't know how to self service is up here. It should be yeah, perfect. It would make no sense. It would make no sense. Yeah, uh, for it should it be great. Working. But that was a good point you just made about Jaquinda having played at Texas. So, yeah, that's a, that's another storyline. But well, it would be a great win if you could get it. We've had so many great wins over Texas, but they're hard to beat. And uh, so, looking forward to the game Saturday. You know, I, Baylor looks hard to beat, too. That, that's, um, you know, coming in number eight, I, I think to myself, how did they get smoked so badly? by Gonzaga, admittedly yeah. a really good Gonzaga team and on the road, but, uh, you know, just, I don't know. I, I, when, I, when I turned the television off Saturday night, I thought to myself, yeah, they lost this game, but Baylor's really good. Um, yeah. I think when Adu is healthy, they'll defend in the post a little better, and a couple right. couple threes go down. Maybe we're talking a little differently. I mean, I, I didn't see anything yeah. that makes me think that this team won't be as good as we think they can be. Well, we've got a fun team. You've got a lot of different guys that are that are high-level players. And, you know, we get the tip, and you turn around, and boom, there they are in a 1-3-1 one, one zone. You kind of felt like there was a strong chance. Scott Drew's been a zone coach so much of his career. But as, as they won the national championship and have had some other good teams since, he's played a lot more man-to-man. I think we were hoping for a little more man-to-man, too, because uh, we got guys that like to play against man-to-man, like Boogie and DJ and Nelly especially. But the zone kind of slowed us down, grinded us down a little bit. And then you start off 0 for 9 from the 3. That's not a good recipe against any zone. So the hopes of them, of us pulling them out of that zone were zero when we start off 0 for 9. And they just kind of sat in that game zone the whole time. We were much better against the zone in the second half. We attacked it, got the ball to the free throw line. You know, sometimes he flashed Nelly in there. Sometimes he flashed Boogie in there. Uh, Adu Thero was outstanding against the zone throughout the whole game, 24 points. He was, he was, he was really, really good. 
and we're, we're going to be fine. And you hit it right on the head. Jonas is a very good defensive player. He's almost seven foot. He's a good athlete. He's got super long arms. This guy blocked 66 shots last year in, in playing at Tennessee. So we don't have a guy that kind of defense out there not as effective. So that, that, that hurts, and that's a big part of, I think, the plan of this team going into the season, him being a big part of it. And he's, he's played in both the regular season games, but he's, he obviously is not 100% by any means. So every day, he, hopefully he gets better and moves better and jumps better and gets back to being an athletic guy that he can be. So um, it's a nine-man rotation. It's going to stay a nine-man rotation. You know, the two McDonald's All-American freshmen, not counting Boogie, the other two, they have to continue to come on because they're going to get to minutes. And so Carter and Billy, they don't have to come in and score 15 points each game, but they got to come in and help you and be good on defense and rebound and give energy. And that's what they're capable of doing. I think as they keep figuring out that role, they'll, they'll be more effective as time goes. And, you know, Nelly will be better. Nelly's not been great so far. Um, he's had a couple moments, but he's a guy that can shoot. He can drive it a little bit. He can go rebound. He's a six-four strong guard. You know, we, we need we need him to be good as well. So we got about uh, three or four bye games in a row coming up here, starting on Wednesday night with the, with Troy, and then you got Pacific. So you got a chance against these bye games to figure out a lot about your team. And not that there's not pressure, but a low, maybe a little lower stressful games. Does that makes sense. And so uh, this is where this, this team can really come together. And then you go Thanksgiving and play Illinois in Kansas City. So hopefully by then we're, we're really humming pretty good. Coach, when you play a team like that, I don't know how many teams in the SEC are going to play zone like that. I don't think you got too stagnant. I, I thought they moved the ball. Yeah. Uh, maybe if they could have cut a little more. I don't know if, how many times y'all run trailers to the middle yeah. or the short corner. But just far as a teaching experience, is there anybody in the SEC that's going to play zone like Baylor played against y'all? Well, there are a couple of people that, that can do it, whether it's, um, you know, Chris Jans, the very good coach at Mississippi State, but he, he'll, he'll do most. He wants to play man-to-man, but he might throw some in there. Chris Beard might throw a little zone. Mike, Mike White, we got them at home, though, but Georgia, he's always thrown some different zones in there. Not sure about Kentucky, Mark Pope, what he'll do. I don't, I don't think so. You know, and Missouri is another one that they're not, they haven't been very good, but they, they, they can throw some zone at you. But to answer your question, probably not as good a zone as Baylor. I mean, Scott Drew's been coaching zone his whole career. His mm-hmm. dad played a lot of zone defense. The Drew family's a good zone defense coaches. He can play a 2 3 zone, he can play a 1 3 1 zone, and they play it well. You don't get a ton of just wide open, easy shots. Now, like you said, once we got the ball to the high post, to the free throw line area, we could drive it. One time a dude caught it, squared up, bang, knocked it down right at the free throw line in the second half. We, the ball moved pretty decent throughout the game, uh, but we did we did need a little more cutting. We needed a little more guys cutting into gaps, and you got to attack it. Coach said that on a post game radio when I got to visit with him was, you know, catch the ball and try to drive it, just like you would against man to man. If they cut you off, pass it, and that guy needs to catch it and try to drive it. If they cut you off, pass it, and the next guy needs to try. It. So he does want more drives against the zone, which will obviously break it down. And I think rebounding, we out rebounded Baylor. And when we see zones, we got to fly to that glass. You know, defensive teams in zone don't rebound as well. And he, and, and that will be a big part because this team's got a chance with this size, four really big guys, and Nelly's a pretty good rebounder. Boogie, Boogie had five rebounds the other day from a guard spot. This team really could be a great rebounding team. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 I think we're – we like the guards a lot with the ability to score from Nelly and from Boogie and from DJ. I, I'm really intrigued by Thero, you know, a guy that's been around for a couple of years. Yeah. Um, you know, he wasn't the featured guy. Not like he's going to be a featured guy at Arkansas necessarily, but it it just it just feels like the, this is a season where – he, at least in the first couple of games, looked like he's taken a jump from the season before, his second year at Kentucky. And um, I like his intensity. I like the, the physicality that he plays with. Yeah. And there just seems like there's a lot there from Adu. Well, you know, he's, a, he's not LeBron James, obviously, but he, he, he's that size. I mean, he's 6'8", 250 pounds. I mean, he's, you know, LeBron at times has played at 260, 265. I was say, I feel like Carl Malone. Yeah, that's right. Big, strong, those big balls, shoulders, you know, and strong arms. And 
he was so good the other night. I mean, every time you caught he caught the ball, you thought he had a great chance to score. He goes to the glass. He tries to rebound. He's a good defensive player. Hey, two incredibly athletic plays. Well, every game he tries to shatter the backboard on a dunk. He, he had another one of those incredibly athletic dunks. But then when he went to the basket hard right in front of our bench and their McDonald's All-American, B.J. Edgecombe, came up and blocked it clean but hit him with the body. And they called a foul. Good call by the official. We got to go to the free throw line. And and their kid, B.J., he was hurt after that. He, he was able to kind of limp around, and then a few minutes later he was okay. But that was a big-time try to dunk, big-time block attempt. I mean, high-level athleticism. You're, you're going to see a lot, a lot of that out of this team. And uh, I, I love it. I like the fact Coach already got his nine-man rotation. We're not trying to figure out who's going to play, who's not going to play. Is this guy going to start? Is this guy going to get to play at all? Is he not going to play? You know, he's got his rotation, and now it's just piecing that all together and get better at it. How, how does that help the locker room, Coach, when you kind of already know your role uh, as far as players? You kind of want to know what's expected of me. Uh, the camaraderie, uh, does that kind of, I mean, I know, I know there's healthy competition, but knowing right. your role, man, that's big time to already know your role. To already know your role, and they knew it a, a month ago, even before we went to that tip-off tour. You could kind of tell who the nine were, what their role was going to be, as Jonas wasn't quite playing yet, but you knew what it was going to be with those nine guys once he was back. And now if you're number 10 through 15, we have 15 guys on the team, you know, they got to keep working and pushing and, trying to have their dreams to come back. But if you're these nine guys, it's just get better at what you are expected to do. And they all know what they're supposed to do right now. He's, he's made the, the roles. He, he, it's that picture has been painted and the guys know now, if you're Billy Richmond and you're the ninth man, Hey, yeah, I want to play a little bit more. I've got to impress coach. I got to, I got to stay, I got to be early. I got to stay late. I got to, I don't want to play 12 minutes a game. I want to make coach play me 18 minutes a game as a freshman. So, you know, there's those kind of stories that are involved in a team, but for the most part, 90% of their roles has already been shown. And, and that can change though throughout a season. Hopefully there's no injuries, but you know, they still can change. Uh, we may be looking at Billy Richmond by the time we're in league play, he might be playing 22, 23 minutes a game because he's high energy. He's very long. He rebounds. Hey, he's in his second college game the other day. And him and Jeremy Roach get tied up. Roach kind of disrespected him, tossing the ball at him. He fired that ball out. He was ready to fight. He, it didn't matter to him that Roach was 23 years old, played four years. At, he didn't care about that. He he has got a fire to him. He's a competitive guy. He's, he's going to be good. He's not going to go out and make six threes, but he's a guy that can do a lot of different things for you. Same with Carter. you know. And so it'll be interesting as this team continues to grow. And that's what these bye games coming up gives the team a chance to kind of come together and we'll have a lot more idea how good this team can be as we go through these games before we head back to play Illinois. Well, Zim, we're right about out of time here. I know we'll hear from you later tonight on the, um, on the uh, Coach Cal radio show uh, yeah. here on ESPN Arkansas. Be on the call Wednesday. You better be on your game Saturday um, spotting for Chuck. I won't be there. I'll be in L.A., so you won't have your assistant spotter. Hopefully you've got a third hand somewhere. Yeah, I was disappointed when I found out from Learfield that you would be going uh, with women's basketball to UCLA, which you need to do. That's a good thing, and L.A. will be very nice. You're kind of an L.A. guy with a Pittsburgh flair. He is an but, L.A. Uh, guy, Coach. He is an L.A. guy with a little Pittsburgh slash to him. But, uh, I'm going to go but, change but, into yeah. an all-black suit for a moment here. <laughs> but it won't be the same without you up in the radio booth, so hopefully I won't get in too much trouble up there. So I might have to be ready. I might have to have a good night's sleep Friday night. Better have those napkins ready to go, Zim. Appreciate you, man. Thanks for coming on today. All right. Okay. See y'all. Thanks, Coach. Bet Online is the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for online betting. From the earliest odds to in-game live betting, Bet Online provides you with all the action and the ability to watch the games as they happen. With the largest selection of odds on everything from football, NBA, and college basketball, NHL to UFC and MMA. Head to Bet Online today to get in on the action with America's most trusted site for online wagering. Bet Online. The game starts here.